Guys, today I'm going to explain you why five-star weapons are probably less impactful than you think. First of all, let me explain something that is very important to understand to get the main point of this video. It's not about how strong a specific five-star weapon is, but rather about how much a specific character can benefit from the type of damage increase a five-star weapon can generate for him. Something that is always present in every Genshin Impact combat is the total damage your team is able to deal. Each of the characters on the team is dealing a part of the team damage and that's their team damage contribution. This can be low, medium or high and generally the higher it is the more the team will benefit from you improving that specific character. And this is where 5 star weapons come in. Typically 5 star weapons are some of the most direct ways to improve a character's performance. Some 5 star weapons can even be 20% stronger than the strongest 4 star option and I'm not gonna lie here that sounds really big but I think I want you to understand is what's hiding behind this number. In a vacuum, a percentage like this only tells us how much more damage a character is going to deal in a relative sense, but the thing it feels at is telling us how much the team is going to benefit from this 5 star weapon. Let's take Alhatam as an example. Alhatam is one of the characters in the game that has the highest variety in terms of team damage contribution. It can get quite high on teams with consistent quick and uptime that can allow him to deal a lot of spread damage while it gets pretty low on teams that have a lot of hyper bloom damage so the quick and uptime is not that high and you also have the electro character dealing a lot of damage. His signature is Light of Foliar that is pretty regularly 13% stronger than a full uptime or pincher of dawn at refinement 5. So basically Alhatam ends up getting the same relative increase on all of his teams but since as a baseline his damage is higher on quicken teams this relative increase converts to more damage on that team as opposed to the Hyperbloom teams. So for Alhatam the impact of his signature can range from rather low to pretty nice, but it's worth mentioning that it's never a life-changing upgrade. Let's be honest, for the most part the difference caused by 1 or 200 more damage will not translate to anything more than you clearing an abyss room 2 or 3 seconds faster. So. For now, clearly nothing exciting, but uh, let's see more. Before I move on, let me remind you that if you enjoy my content but you haven't subbed yet, please consider doing so because it really helps me notice your support. So we've just seen a case where even if the relative value of a weapon stays the same between different teams, its actual impact can get lower. But there are also cases where the weapon's relative value can change. This mostly applies to weapons that buff stats that can easily get saturated through team buffs in the context of the game. So for example, example Staff of Homa or Engulfing Lightning. Through their passives these weapons provide very big attack buffs and this doesn't synergize very well with a character like Bennett that pretty much makes attack a saturated stat by himself. Regarding Homa specifically there is this pretty funny case with Hu Tao. Hu Tao is for the most part either played on double hydro teams or hyper teams. On double hydro teams she's typically paired with characters like Yelan, Furina, Shincho, all sub DPS that contributed to the team damage rather meaningfully. As a result, her personal damage contribution to the team ends up being relatively low. So even though on these teams, Homa can even be a 20% damage increase over a strong 4 star option like a Ballad of the Fjords, the actual damage increase you get from it is not that high. Plus, since Homa's passive actually gets stronger when Huta's HPs are below 50%, on teams where you use healers, so Furina teams, the impact of the passive gets lower. On the flip side, on the hyper teams where she's paired with Bennett, a hydro unit and an animo unit to swirl pyro, her team damage contribution is much higher. But not only the presence of Bennett lowers the impact of the Homa's passive, but the fact that Bennett is actively healing Uta also makes it hard for the second part of the passive to actually active. So while Huto's team damage contribution has gotten higher, the relative value of Homa has gotten lower, and as a result it doesn't end up being that good. Great. Keep in mind that until now we've seen weapons that are generally considered very strong, like uh, Foliar, Huma, I myself consider them quite strong, but the results are not exciting. Honestly speaking, unless the team damage contribution of a character isn't over 70 or 80% and the weapon itself doesn't go in conflict stat-wise with other team buffs, it's not really worth it to pull for a 5 star weapon to me. The presence of Furina on so many teams now kind of skews this because her impact is not just about buffing the main character and the whole team, but also about the personal damage she deals, and as a result, 
pretty much none of her teams end up being those kind of super duper hyper carry teams with the main carry dealing 90% of the team damage or something like that. On these teams, it's very often just more valuable to get Furina's Constellation 1 as opposed to a signature weapon because it's a higher team damage increase. There are a few exceptions where the signature weapon also provides quality of life over 4 star options, for example Eternal Flow for New Violet over Sacrificial Jade, where Sacrificial Jade's effects are time limited and so they can be annoying, or for example Tulaitula on Wanderer as opposed to Witsit, Witsit being a popularly cancerous weapon due to its RNG effects. But again, unless the character's team damage contribution is very high, there is never really a situation where pulling a signature for him is a game altering upgrade. So before you make this quite expensive decision, it's very important to understand how the team you plan to play that character on works. Because without saying that I would never suggest pulling a 5 star weapon on a sub DPS, so characters like a Yelan, Furina, Nahida, I would never suggest that. Actually, I will make a small tier list on this. I will rank 5 stars based on how much they can typically benefit from 5 star weapons. So let's go. First of all, all of the sub DPS go here because uh, their team damage contribution is rather low. Yelan, Nahida, Furina, even Yae, Yae most of the time is used as a sub DPS and even when she's used on field with Fischl as a sub DPS, her team damage contribution is generally around 40%. We have a uh, Kokomi, where is Kokomi? Okay, she's here, Child, Child is also around this area and we can't forget Ayato either. Ayato goes here as well. For all of these characters, pulling a signature weapon is honestly not great value. Then we have uh, the medium value tier, where Raiden goes most of the time. The hyper teams, she has higher damage contribution, but the value of engulfing lightning lowers there. So, Utao, uh, Yula, um, It. So it does have some teams where his damage contribution is higher, but uh, for example on the Yelan teams that have Albedo or the upcoming Chiori, his team damage contribution definitely gets lower. I'll hate them. Yoimiya. Sino. Sino is a bit higher than this, 50 to 60%, but uh, part of his team damage is caused by Hyper Blooms and the weapon doesn't buff them. Klee. Definitely Kli as well. Then we have characters that uh, don't have a very good signature but have a higher damage contribution, like uh, Xiao, Navia. The verdict on Navia doesn't scale well with Bennett. Oh, Ganyu. Ganyu goes to medium value as well. Honestly, Brizzly also goes here. Like, uh, he has teams where he can do a lot of damage, but uh, in a lot of his teams, he has uh, Shaoling, Furina, Yelan, Furina. So they contribute to a lot of damage and they lower the impact of the signature weapon on him, on the team. Then we have characters like uh, Ayaka or uh, Wanderer that have a very high team damage contribution and pretty nice signatures. Characters like Nuvilet or uh, Line can be paired with characters like uh, Xianling or Furina on their teams, so in those scenarios their team damage contribution definitely can get lower, but for the most part it stays pretty high, and their signatures are amazing, so I'm semi-confident putting them here. Nidu. Nidu isn't doing that much damage by herself on her teams, of course, it's about the blooms, but the key of Kajinizut is increasing the bloom damage by a lot of the whole team by increasing the HPs Nilu has, so uh, it's a very good signature. Then we have a lot of supportive weapons uh, for, for these characters that are honestly pretty hard to rank because it depends on the team. Usually it's not the highest damage increase, like uh, it's nice, but uh, it's not really a worthy pull, I would say. And, uh, oh, these three guys. Hmm. Wait. There, you go here. You don't deserve to be on the rest of the list. Actually, Baiju's signature isn't as bad as these guys, but, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't classify it. Definitely don't pick this list as something super objective because uh, things can change depending on the teams you play these characters on. For example, Ito's personal damage contribution can increase, Breeze list can as well, um, Sino I guess, 
but I would say it's pretty negative that on the vast majority of 5 stars I would suggest against pulling for a signature, basically every 5 star under the highest tier. I'm doing this to contextualize the fact that very often going for a 5 star weapon is just not worth your pulls. And with this, I'm done for today. Make sure to go check the video I made on Hu Tao vs Gaming Out where I compared the DPS performance and uh, peace.